I'm with Stephen A. Smith on this one, Max. And one thing that you left out, and it's, it's crazy to me, because when LeBron James was in the East, the whole thing was, was that, oh, he's in the East. So we robbed him. Well, I wouldn't say robbed him, but he, he lost out on four MVPs when he returned back to Cleveland, right? Truth. He lost out on four MVPs. Why? Because he was in the East. I, I think with LeBron, I think he's, he understands, look, he's been the best player in the world for what? 10, Decade. 12 years, something Easy. like that. And he knows, and it, he's been the best player in the world, and there were clearly, if you just take the name literally most valuable player, he's clearly been the most valuable player to his team so many times. The Derrick Rose MVP in 2011 is his taken from him. Steph's first MVP in 2015, his taken from him. Took that Cavs team that was nothing to the NBA Finals. And I know it's a regular season award. They were excellent in the regular season. The Finals MVP that same year that they gave to Andre Iguodala. Andre this. Iguodala defended LeBron James. He, he deserves it because of what a great defensive job he did on LeBron. When LeBron averaged 36, 13, and 9. Winning the guy doesn't who, matter. The guy who held him Two 36, 13, and 9 wins finals MVP and defensive player of the year. That's 2013 when the guy who won it, Mark Gasol, did not even, wasn't even first team all defense. They don't even first team all defense. He gets defensive player of the year. Le so that's what LeBron thinks he should have at a minimum. Maybe it's seven league MVPs, but definitely six. So there's never going to be another LeBron in terms of the longevity and the height he attained and, and the way he maintained it. But I'll say this he got four MVPs. He should have at least eight, right? I agree. Jordan probably should have. What's going on guys? So in today's video, we'll be debunking the myth that LeBron James should have won more than four MVPs in his career, which became a part of his narrative this past season, as it pertained to his MVP case against Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now when talking about being the league MVP, what many people fail to understand is that the award doesn't necessarily go to the NBA's best player, but to the player who is having the best season, where team success is as much a factor as individual success. I couldn't have won this award without the play of my teammates. You know, this is a team award. This isn't an individual award. This is an award that you know, I couldn't have won them all. Uh, if that was the case, I would have won it when I was averaging 40. Um, <laughs> this gets done because we all do it as a unit. And um, so I, I can't thank these guys enough. You know, these are my guys. These are my brothers. And um, we have won MVP. And I think the, 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 the special thing about this award is that we have done it together. I mean, this is, I can't stress upon you enough that this is not an individual award. I mean, this is us playing as a unit. And they, you know, these guys here, they make me look better than I actually am because they improved in the summertime. They, they became better basketball players. They did that work. And in return, you know, it's made me, you know, giving me the opportunity to stand here in front of you guys winning the MVP, but I couldn't have done it without them. So as we now look at a list of all of the MVPs since the 1955-56 season, we see that 85% of them have led their respective teams to either the first or second seed in the NBA, while 65% of all MVPs have led their teams to the best overall record in the league. However, voters have shown that throughout the years, they will allow certain players to be MVPs even when their team record isn't necessarily up to par. Whether it's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in 1976, Moses Malone in 1982, Michael Jordan in 1988, or even LeBron James who was the MVP of the 2011-2012 season despite the Miami Heat having just the fourth best record in the league. So in looking back at LeBron James's career up to this point, it is important to note that he has not only been named league MVP each and every time he has led his teams to the best record in the NBA, but he is also one of just a handful of players who was able to transcend conventional voting and win the MVP award in spite of his team's underwhelming regular season record. What must also be taken into account is that during his most recent stint with the Cleveland Cavaliers, LeBron James had made it a point to coast during the regular season before going zero dark 30 
in the playoffs. This complacency is part of the reason why the Cleveland Cavaliers barely won over 50 games each of those four seasons, even though they had a championship roster. And when that is juxtaposed to other players, who played with a bigger sense of urgency during the regular season, and thus led their teams to better records, it becomes easier to remember why LeBron James was never viewed as a serious MVP candidate during that time. Whether it's the 2017-2018 season, where James Harden was named league MVP after leading the Houston Rockets to the number one seed in the NBA with a 65-17 and record, all the while putting up great stats and sweeping the Cleveland Cavaliers who won just 51 games that year in their regular season series. Then in 2017, Russell Westbrook was named league MVP even though the Oklahoma City Thunder's regular season record wasn't up to par due to the voters being swept away by the fact that he became just the second player in NBA history to average a triple-double since Oscar Robertson did it during the 1961-62 season. Meanwhile, the Cleveland Cavaliers, who were led by LeBron James, finished that season with a 51-31 and record, which included being 500 over their last 46 games. The 2015-16 season belonged to Stephen Curry, who became the first unanimous MVP in NBA history after leading the Golden State Warriors to an NBA record 73 wins during the regular season all the while scoring over 30 points a game on 50-40-90 splits. Stephen Curry also grabbed the 2015 MVP trophy after leading those same Warriors to the number one seed in the NBA with a 67-15 record, while the Cleveland Cavaliers, who were led by LeBron James, finished that season with a 53-29 record, which was seventh best in the league. This was also the season where LeBron James took his infamous two-week trip to Miami after getting off to a slow start, causing him to suit up for just 69 games that season, which is the lowest of his career. So as we see, when talking about LeBron James' second stint in Cleveland, there really is no case for him being MVP at any point during those four seasons. Furthermore, those Cleveland Cavaliers teams never seemed to be in sync during those four seasons and always made it seem like they were using the regular season as a way to work out some of their on-the-court issues. Now as for the 2013-14 season, the MVP was given to Kevin Durant who not only led the league in scoring that season on great efficiency, but also led the OKC Thunder to the second best record in the league despite Russell Westbrook playing in only 46 games that season while LeBron James' Miami Heat were tied for just the fifth best record in the league with two other teams. But what's perhaps the most talked about season in regards to LeBron James possibly being snubbed as a league MVP is the 2010-2011 season. That season, Derrick Rose who was the MVP not only led the Chicago Bulls to an NBA best 62-20 record, but did so while his team dealt with numerous injuries. Carlos Boozer, who was the Chicago Bulls' starting power forward and their second leading scorer, missed 23 games that season while Joakim Noah, who was their leading rebounder and best defender, played in just 46 games that year due to ligament damage in his hand. However, despite these injuries, as well as a few others, Derrick Rose was still able to lead the Chicago Bulls to the best overall record in the league over teams like the Boston Celtics, the San Antonio Spurs, and the Miami Heat, who were all much more talented and less injury riddled than the Chicago Bulls. And in their head-to-head -head matchup, the Chicago Bulls beat the Miami Heat all three times, thereby sweeping their regular season series. So with that being said, how can a serious argument then be made for LeBron James as the MVP over Derrick Rose that season, 
when he couldn't lead the Miami Heat to a better regular season record with a prime Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh as his teammates. In fact, Derrick Rose being the MVP that season was so clear and obvious that even Chris Bosh, who was LeBron James' teammate, recognized Derrick Rose as the rightful MVP. Chris, uh, Juwan said yesterday he would take Derrick over LeBron for the MVP. Mm -hmm. If you had a vote out of those two, who would you vote for? Well, I mean, just, I mean, um, just looking at it, uh, LeBron's won the last two. Um, you know, he is my teammate, I would uh, say him first, but Derek, he's had a phenomenal season. Um, just, just looking at what he's done with the team um, and, and, and looking at their record and how improved they are as a team and, and how much improved he is as a player, I think, um, I think it's close, but yeah, I think I would give it uh, to Derek if I were a voter. But, um, you know, he's, he's playing well. He's, uh, he's, he's the playing like the best point guard in the league and the best player in the league. He's, he's the most valuable player. I mean, if you really think about it, you know, you take him out of the, out of the lineup, it's going to tell him what you get. So what are we then left with? Whether it's LeBron James' rookie season, where he didn't make the All-Star game or any of the All-NBA teams, and the Cleveland Cavaliers failed to make the postseason. So was he supposed to win MVP then? How about the following season? when he was named to his very first All-Star game and made the All-NBA second team, but still couldn't lead the Cleveland Cavaliers to the playoffs after finishing the season with a 42-40 and 40 record. Was he snubbed as an MVP then? What about 2006? Should LeBron James have won MVP over Steve Nash after leading the Cleveland Cavaliers to just 50 wins? Was his MVP case that much stronger than another MVP candidate like Chauncey Billups who had led the Detroit Pistons to a league-best 64 wins. Part of the reason why it feels like LeBron James should have won more MVPs during his career is because his postseason play has always been so dominant that it's always left a better lasting impression and has oftentimes overshadowed what many of the actual MVPs had accomplished during both the regular season and the playoffs. Like in 2007, when after leading the Cleveland Cavaliers to another 50-win season, LeBron James then led that same team to the NBA Finals after a dominant performance against the Detroit Pistons in the Eastern Conference Finals, including a road win in Game 5 where he infamously scored his team's last 25 points in the fourth quarter and two overtimes. Meanwhile, Dirk Nowinski, who was rightfully named MVP that season after leading the Dallas Mavericks to the best record in the league at 67-15, lost in a first-round upset to the eighth-seeded Golden State Warriors. Then in 2008, despite a very disappointing 45-37 record during the season, LeBron James then led the Cleveland Cavaliers to a Game 7 against the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference semifinals, where they lost by the score of 97-92 behind LeBron James' game-high 45 points. Whereas Kobe Bryant, who was named MVP that season, after leading the Lakers to the second best record in the league and who were title favorites going into the finals against those same Boston Celtics, lost that series in just six games, including a 39-point blowout in game six where Kobe Bryant scored just 22 points on 22 shots. What we also observe at different points in LeBron James' career is him outplaying many of his MVP contemporaries in head-to-head -head matchups during the postseason. Like in 2011, when the Miami Heat faced off against the Chicago Bulls in the Eastern Conference Finals, where LeBron James thoroughly outplayed league MVP Derrick Rose on offense as well as defense, and ended the series by blocking what would have been a game-tying three-point shot by Derrick Rose in Game 5. Then in 2016, LeBron James led the Cleveland Cavaliers to a historic comeback in the NBA Finals over the Golden State Warriors, who were led by league MVP Stephen Curry. And so when all of these moments and highlights are then combined with the around-the-clock, non-stop coverage that LeBron James receives on ESPN as well as other media outlets, it's then easy to be fooled into thinking that he was snubbed out of a few MVPs. Kevin. Who is your MVP? 
My MVP is number one. You just saw him right there, <laughs> Derek Rose. He's wearing number one for a reason because he can flat out play. I just love the kid. And one of the reasons that, that I chose him for MVP this year was he's done it without his starting combination up front with him. Starts off the season, no Boozer. Yep. And then as soon as Boozer comes back, no Noah. And what was the one consistent and one constant? Derrick Rose. Every night bringing it. Love him. I totally agree with you, Kevin. See, we're back, yes, we're, we're back, back online. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you sickness. talk about Derrick Rose. You said it right. <laughs> Noah and Boozer, they combined. They missed about 57 games. Uh, you know, right now they have the best record in the Eastern Conference. And maybe at the end of the year could have the best record in basketball. That's a big maybe. But Derrick Rose has been so consistent. And you know what? You love when a kid goes out and when people say he can't shoot the three, guess what? He made 32 threes combined his first two seasons at over 120 so far yeah. for the Chicago Bulls. Makes teammates better. And you know what, Ernie, what sets him apart for me? During All-Star Weekend, getting a chance to talk to him, he had that championship focus during All-Star yeah. Weekend. He does not let a smile come out. Is always focused on winning, 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 even during the All-Star game. And how about his answers when he talks to the media? Yeah. It's all about team. Everybody, everybody in our league should look at him and say, I want to talk like this guy talks because it's all positive. It's all about team. I love watching this kid play. And I like listening to him and talk. He's humble. You're right. Very humble.